This is Nina Curley of WAMDA Media. I'm here with Tariq Sultan, the CEO and General Manager of Agility, a Kuwait-based logistics company. Tariq, how are you? Fine, thank you. Excellent. So when you acquired Agility, it was making $20 million in revenue, and you took it to a $6 billion company. Can you talk to us a little bit about your experience as an entrepreneur and then what the biggest challenges were scaling a company of that size? I started my own firm um, right out of business school. I borrowed the money from my wife and started the, the firm. And uh, um, after four or five years of uh, building the, 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 the firm, I felt that I wanted to be more involved in, in, in a real, a real business. And one of the opportunities that we came across was, uh, was agility. Uh, at the time, it was called Public Warehousing Company. It was a government-owned company. It was a land-grant company. Um, and uh, you know, we felt that it would be quite a challenge, obviously, taking a company that was primarily based on real estate and growing it into a service company, and that's what we we, we did. We, what we really had to do was expand our geographic uh, focus. Uh, you know, we used to be only in one country. Now today, we're in a hundred countries, um, and uh, you know that uh, obviously created a lot of challenges for the company because that happened over a very short period of time. It was difficult for the management team to adjust to, to actually managing such a large uh, enterprise when our skill set was based on actually running something on a very entrepreneurial level. What sort of new management structures did you have to put in place? Did you do trainings with your staff or? Well, I think the, the, first, the, the first thing that we had to do is once the business grew to a certain size, we had to be very disciplined in deciding who was going to add value where. And as an entrepreneur, you don't have that luxury. As an entrepreneur, you have to basically do everything and add value um, in every interaction that you, that you undertake. But once the company gets to a certain size, you need to step away from doing that because if you're micromanaging in that way, you're going to basically be, you're not going to be empowering somebody else. When you started scaling into other countries, did you do it with local partners or did you set up a team on the ground? What were your biggest challenges entering new markets? We have a number of different models. We, although we prefer to do it ourselves, um, we've often worked with partners, with joint venture partners and also with agents. But my, my advice would be uh, clearly early on is to you know, try to do as much of the work yourself that you can so you can learn the business and learn what makes your value proposition unique and then later on down the road you know you can start uh, franchising or delegating but I, I think early on you have to really do a lot yourself so that you can uh, figure out how you're going to compete going forward. Absolutely um, and just finally do you have any advice for entrepreneurs who are just starting out and thinking about building a company that can scale one day? I, th I think it's important that that, you're, that you can be able, that you can set very ambitious objectives, very difficult objectives, but then once you meet them, you need to be able to, to reset the bar to something that's more difficult to achieve. And that's, uh, you know, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we, you know, we reach a certain uh, uh, level and then we're kind of satisfied. But if you always move the bar and you keep, um, keep challenging yourself, you'll be surprised how much you can actually accomplish. Thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you. Thank you.